Welcome back friends. In this tutorial, I'll show you why you may want to start using Blender shape keys and how you can use them inside the Godot engine. Let's get to it. I love being able to customize my player characters in video games, and I'll spend literally hours finessing the settings to get the look I like, and don't even get me started on how long it takes to pick a name. But have you ever stopped to consider how much work was done behind the scenes to bring you so many options? Surely, an indie solo developer couldn't possibly do all that work on their own. Well, let me show you how straightforward it is to make shape keys in Blender and how simple it is to use them in Godot. There's a ton of info on shape keys on the web, but I'd fail as a completionist if I didn't give you a little background about what a shape key is. Shape keys actually have many names depending on the software you use. They can be called blend shapes or morph targets, but in Blender they're called shape keys. In a nutshell, every 3D object is made of a collection of points specified by vectors called a mesh. This is our base mesh. If we want our object to move in our game, we need to move these points. If our object doesn't need to change as it moves, we can just apply a transformation matrix to every point in the object and it will move around our game world. However, if we want our mesh to change, like to make a character run or do yoga, we need to change the individual points of our mesh. There are typically two ways to do this. The first is to rig our object with a skeleton where we assign each point of our mesh to a bone. Then when we apply a transformation matrix to each bone, the points assigned to it will move as well. But the second way to move the points is to store a whole new list of positions, one position for each point that we want to change. The number of points in our mesh doesn't change, but each point can be assigned many positions. Each unique list of positions is called a shape key. The new positions of the shape key are relative to the base mesh's position. We can then have the computer interpolate between any two shape keys to provide intermediate positions. Traditionally, shape keys have been used by animators to animate subtle changes like facial features, and it is also often used to give players a lot of freedom to craft their own player avatars sometimes too much freedom. These sort of things are fascinating to me, but as a solo indie developer, I really don't have time to be fussing over eyebrow angles. Instead, I use shape keys to put variety into my games at a low cost. If I make one model with a handful of shape keys that change the way the model looks, that single model can become a virtually infinite variety of models in my game world. And in today's demo, I'll show you a simple example of just that. But first, I'll demonstrate how to make a model with a shape key and how to use it in Godot. So it's time to head into Blender. First thing first, I'll make us a unit sphere to experiment with. And while I'm in object mode, I'll apply smooth shading just in case I want to apply a cell shader later on. On the right, the green vertex looking icon is the context menu. Clicking on it shows you all of the different kinds of data associated with our sphere object. Find the shape keys section and in object mode, click the plus sign. This initializes the base key of our object, which all other shape keys will be relative to. Click the plus sign again to create our first shape key and double click the key to give it a descriptive name. To edit our new shape key, make sure it is highlighted in the list and click the Edit Shape Key icon. Then pull the value property all the way up to 1. The value property represents the interpolation value between the base key and the shape key. Now when we enter edit mode, all our edits will be saved to the shape key. I'll use proportional editing to make a funky morphed sphere. And here is my final result. To move this asset over to Godot, you can export it straight into a Godot project using the eScene Exporter plugin. See my previous quick tip video to learn how to get and install the eScene Exporter. In the Exporter settings, make sure Export Shape Key is checked. I also don't need any material data to be exported with this sphere, so I'll set the material mode to none. Next we'll simply navigate to our Godot project and click the Export to Godot button. When our file is finished exporting, close Blender and Godot will auto-import our file when it gains focus. But I like to separate my eScene files into their individual components. To do that, I'll change the import settings and hit re-import so I don't have to work with the auto-generated scene. Today's tutorial scene starts with a spatial root node and a camera. Let's add our sphere mesh instance to the scene and give it our iconic outlined material.
In our Mesh Instance Inspector properties, notice we have a new section called Blend Shapes. Open it to view the blend shape we made back in Blender. Moving the slider between 0 and 1 interpolates between the base shape and the shape key. But moving the slider manually isn't the only way to control the shape key value. Shape key values can be changed via animations and through scripts. Add an animation player to our scene. Create a new animation and a new property track. On our Sphere's Mesh Instance node, select the desired blend shape to animate it in the animation editor. I'll also quickly check the loop and autoplay on load settings, so when we run our scene, this animation will run and loop by default. This animation will run for one second, so at the time of 0 and 1, let's make a keyframe with the shape key value at 0, and at time 0.5, we'll make a keyframe with the shape key value of 1. To control the shape key value from the script, take note of the tooltip as we mouse over the shape key. It says that the shape key is of a type property, but when we look at the documentation for mesh instance, it doesn't say anything about blend shapes. But don't forget that the mesh instance class also owns all of the properties and methods of the classes it's derived from. In this case, the method we want is inherited way back in the object class. It's a method called set. Back in our script, we'll use the set function to set the value of the blend shape property. The set function needs the string that denotes the path of the property, which we can find in the tooltip as we mouse over the shape key. In this case, the string is blend underscore shape forward slash morphed sphere. And finally, we need to give the set function a value between the range of 0 and 1. To make things interesting, let's give a random value, so every time we run our scene, the sphere will be a slightly different shape. Something you may not know about me, my favorite holiday is Halloween. So to celebrate, I made this spider for today's demo. But this is no ordinary spider model. This is a shaped key spider model. Take a look at the blend shapes in the inspector. We can change the abdomen size, eye size, leg length, leg thickness, mandible length, and mandible size. From just a single model, one can generate a wide variety of spider types. Every time a spider is instance, its blend shapes could be randomized and you'd get a unique spider. But instead of doing that, I've linked this spider's blend shapes to our friend, the Open Simplex Noise resource. When I run this scene, the Perlin noise values explore this spider's procedurally generated solution space. If you want to take a closer look, this demo scene and the previous tutorial is available for download on the Dave the Deb GitHub page. Well, that'll do for this tutorial. Thank you for all of your support and comments. I love hearing from you. If you learned something cool today, consider hitting the like button and hit subscribe and the bell icon if you want to continue learning about game dev with us here on Dave the Dev. Finally, if you're curious about what I do between videos, follow me on Twitter where I post frequent devlog updates. Hope to see you over there and in the next video. Until then, happy devving!